Good afternoon. I said that correctly. Good afternoon. I hereby call to order this 11th meeting of the Pennsylvania Public Utility Commission for the year 2017 and ask that you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And we will acknowledge that we have Commissioner Rob Powson on the phone. Can we hear you, Commissioner Powson? Good afternoon, Chairman Brown and colleagues. Looking forward to today's public meeting. Thank you very much. Our first matter on this afternoon's agenda is the approval of the minutes for the meeting May 18, 2017. And the editor of the minutes is Commissioner John Coleman. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I've reviewed the minutes of the May 18, 2017 meeting, and I move that they be approved as submitted. You have heard the motion to approve the May 18th meeting. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Sweet. Any discussion, any further edits? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes five to zero. This time we will call upon our director of our Office of Special Assistance, Cheryl Walker Davis, to lead us through this afternoon's agenda. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Good morning. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> See, I was doing well. That's right. <laughs> Already off script. <laughs> Uh, may it please this honorable commission on behalf of your various offices and bureaus, we present for your consideration and disposition the following agenda items commencing this morning with matters on behalf of the commission's office of special assistance. It is recommended that the commission adopt in omnibus fashion all of the items appearing on pages one, two, three, and four through and including the item at the bottom pertaining to the Mahoning Township versus Buffalo and Pittsburgh Railroad Inc, PennDOT and New Bethlehem Borough. You've heard the motion to, is there a motion to adopt, a, is there a motion to adopt the staff recommendation? So moved. Moved by Vice Chairman Place, is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Coleman, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. All right. Aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion passes five to zero. With regard to matters presented on behalf of the Commission's Bureau of Technical Utility Services, it is recommended that the, the Commission adopt the first two items at the top of page five in the matter pertaining to the Pico Energy Company letter petition for approval of nine board members to the Sustainable Development Fund, as well as the matter pertaining to the cancellation of electric generation supplier licenses. Is there a motion to adopt staff recommendations? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Commissioner Coleman, second by Commissioner Sweet. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes five to zero. It is recommended that the commission adopt the staff recommendation in the matter pertaining to the application of Wanger Works, Inc., T.A. Tuck Tuck Lancaster, noting, Madam Chairman, your statements as well as the statements of Commissioner Powelson and Vice Chairman Place. Is there a motion to adopt the staff recommendations? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Commissioner Sweet, second by Vice Chairman Place. Under discussion, I recognize Commissioner Powelson for his comments. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Before the commission this afternoon is the unprotested application of Wenger Works to provide transportation service to tourists within the city of Lancaster. The applicant proposes to use a three-wheel electric-powered vehicle known as Tuk Tuk to provide food tours and sightseeing excursions within the city boundaries. Wenger Works is offering a new and innovative form of transportation that has the potential to bring great benefits to the city of Lancaster and the tourism market within central Pennsylvania. In fact, I'd like to take this opportunity this afternoon to applaud the letters of support that we received from State Senator Martin, the county commissioners, along with the mayor of the city of Lancaster, supporting this applicant. It is arguable that Wanger Works service does not fall within the commission's jurisdiction. However, if the commission believes the service is jurisdictional, 
then it should grant Wenger Works a certificate and not deny this service to the public. If regulated properly, with appropriate safety parameters, Wenger Works service could thrive and provide tourists with a new enticement to visit Lancaster and enjoy the city's many attractions. There are sufficient facts in front of us this afternoon to grant Wenger Works a certificate of experimental authority. This type of authority is temporary, lasting only two years, which would give the Commission time to observe Wenger Works operation and gather additional information to determine whether to grant permanent authority, as we learned this from our uh, regulations of transportation network companies here in the Commonwealth. In the meantime, the owners have clearly established that they have the technical and financial fitness to safely run this business. And as demonstrated by the multitude of verified statements submitted by the public in support of Wanger Works, consumers clearly want this service. Wanger Works submitted its application to the Commission in December of 2016, and the filing received no protest. During that time, the Commission has, made, has had ample opportunity to examine Winger Works operations and ask any unanswered questions of the applicant. Denying the application for insufficient information is not a reasonable outcome, particularly when the Commission has had seven months to assess the proposed service. One of the most important duties this Commission has is ensuring that its transportation providers are safe and I do not take that responsibility lightly, or none of us as, as public utility commissioners do. However, regulation, as we all know, is a balancing act, and the commission must also strive to ensure that its regulations are not unreasonable, creating unreasonable barriers to new and innovative transportation services that Pennsylvanians demand. By denying Wenger Works application this afternoon, the commission is once again demonstrating an inability to effectively react and adapt the Pennsylvania's changing transportation landscape. I also believe that if we were to approve this application, it was consistent with the efforts around transportation network company approvals, along with the work that has been done around our Transportation 2.0 initiative. Therefore, I respectfully dissent here this afternoon with the majority. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Powelson. Vice Chair, place. Thank you. <clears throat> Upon review of the application and supporting information, I believe that the record is not complete regarding the safety of the vehicle being used to provide service to tourists on public roads in Lancaster County. Although this type of vehicle is considered a motor vehicle by the United States Department of Transportation and licensed by the Depar Pennsylvania Department of Transportation as a motorcycle, the E-Tuck limo is not an enclosed vehicle and provides little protection to its passengers in the event of a collision. Also, the vehicle having only three wheels lacks the inherent stability of a four-wheel vehicle and in carrying up to six passengers would be more susceptible to rolling over than conventional vehicles. Further, Commission staff has confirmed that no independent testing is being performed by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration or the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. While I agree that all forms of transportation have some element of risk, the Commission is responsible for ensuring prudency in any transportation offered to the public by minimizing risk to the extent possible. At this time, particularly given the lack of safety testing and limitations for passenger protection, permitting common care and service by an e limo operating on city streets with six passengers aboard would be imprudent unless the applicant can prove otherwise. I believe that experimental service has its place in encouraging competition and in evaluating new business models in the transportation industry. However, this application is only innovative in the type of vehicle used, as there are many other similarly situated services throughout the Commonwealth, for example, duckies and um, double-decker buses. During the evaluation of this application, the changes in the transportation industry the Commission's obligation remains constant in that we are required to comprehensively gather and fully evaluate information to determine whether an e -tuck limo operating on city streets with six passengers is able to safely provide the proposed transportation service in Pennsylvania. By denying this application for operating authority in light of the fact that additional information would be warranted to enable a complete determination of whether an e -tuck limo can safely provide the proposed service, I believe that the Commission has fulfilled its obligation statutory obligation. To do otherwise would be an abdication of the Commission's responsibility to the public. 
As an aside, I'm a farmer. I have known far too many farmers killed in rollovers, particularly tricycle tractors and ATVs. In a farm context, they scare me to death and have largely disappeared from use for that reason. I, re I remain committed to a thorough consideration of this vehicle before us today. However, commercial considerations cannot be placed ahead of a thorough consideration of the risk to the public. It's essential we get the safety right first. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Please, Commissioner Coleman. Well, thank you, Chairman. And um, I just wanted to go back uh, to a, a comment that, uh, that Commissioner Paulson made that he uh, puts forth the point that it's even arguable whether this is a company that we should be certificating. And I think the comments uh, this afternoon are reflecting that I think we all wish that this record was a little bit more developed on that point. Uh, it seems that the primary focus of this company is a sightseeing tourism business and that uh, perhaps that the service that we're talking about today is really incidental, an incidental service to that business. So I uh, really wish that that record was a little further developed uh, this afternoon, and for that reason, I'm going to be dissenting. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Coleman. Uh, and, and in my comments, I wanna submit them in their entirety for the record, but just give you a summary of some of my concerns. Well, I believe that Wenger Works meets the financial fitness standard for being granted a certificate of public convenience. I currently do not feel that I have sufficient information upon which to base a determination regarding the safety of Tuk Tuk's proposed operations. In order for me to say that I have thoroughly considered this application, I would like to know the following. Does the city of Lancaster have any safety concerns regarding Tuk Tuk vehicles operating on city streets alongside heavier four wheel or even 18 wheel vehicles. Does the city police have any concerns about Tuk Tuk vehicles impeding the normal flow of traffic? Has the city of Lancaster considered how it will notify the public that these vehicles would be sharing the road? Are, these, are there bike lanes that would be more appropriate for Tuk Tuk vehicle operations? Uh, it appears that Wenger Works is currently operating free of charge on, in the city of Lancaster. So my question to that, has there been any moving violations or incidents? If so, uh, would they please provide details? Another item is how many drivers does Wenger Works currently have providing the service free of charge? And then finally, what is the current route or area of operation for Wenger Works free service? This commission has never approved a three-wheeled vehicle as a common carrier, and out of an abundance of caution on my part, I believe that the commission will be best served to proceed cautiously and gather as much information as reasonable, reasonably possible about the vehicles and the conditions in which they will be operating. I prefer not to block innovation in the transportation sector. However, safety will always be my primary concern when considering any application for the provision of service. Should Wenger Works file again in the future, I strongly recommend that it provide the information that I have delineated here today. Any further comments or discussion? Hearing none, on the motion of adopting the staff rec recommendation, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. Opposed. The motion passes three to two, noting the dissent of Commissioner Coleman and Commissioner Paulson. Continuing with the presentation of matters on behalf of the Bureau of Technical Utility Services, it is recommended that the commission adopt in omnibus fashion those recommendations beginning with the one in the matter involving the application of one source network SELEC LLC and continuing with the remaining item on page five as well as all items on page six. And the first item pertaining to the application of CIS Energy LLC appearing at the top of page seven. Is there a motion to adopt staff recommendations? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Commissioner Sweet, second by Vice Chairman Place. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes five to zero. It is recommended that the commission adopt the staff recommendation in the matter involving the application of Columbia Gas of Pennsylvania, Inc. for approval of a certificate of public convenience authorizing it to abandon a certain natural gas distribution services, uh, noting the statement of Vice Chairman Place. Is there a motion to adopt the staff recommendation? So moved. Is there a second? Second. 
Motion by Commissioner Coleman, second by Commissioner Sweet. Under discussion, I recognize Vice Chairman Place for his statement. Thank you, Chairman. Madam Secretary, I ask that my statement be entered into the record as if I had read it in its entirety. Before us for consideration is the application of Columbia Gas of Pennsylvania Incorporated seeking a certificate of public convenience authorizing it to abandon natural gas distribution service to three customers located in York County, Pennsylvania. In its application, Columbia quantified the benefits of service abandonment, including that only three residential customers were provided service on a 6.64 mile segment of their system under evaluation. Replacement of the 52-year-old segment was required at a cost of $4.5 million, with a resultant estimated annual cost of service of $576,371. Annual revenues from these three remaining customers was $1,690, leading to a calculated payout of this investment of 340 years, long after I will retire. Um, I certainly support this application. This abandonment project is not only economic from a cost of service perspective, but would also contribute to a reduction in lost and unaccounted for gas with the concomitant benefit of reducing greenhouse gas emissions from these aging lines. Given the substantial and rising cost of maintaining safe and reliable natural gas distribution service, I encourage all natural gas distribution companies to conduct asset optimization studies throughout their pipeline systems to help maintain just and reasonable rates. Furthermore, I encourage NGDCs, whenever possible, to batch such filings for administrative efficiency. It is critical that all NGDCs' efforts to replace at-risk pipe are completed in a cost-effective manner while also maintaining safe and reliable service. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Place, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes five to zero. It is recommended that the commission adopt the remaining two staff recommendations on page seven in the matters involving the PPL Electric Utilities letter of notification pertaining to the uh, transmission line in Milton Borough, Northumberland County, as well as the matter pertaining to the People's TWP LLC security certificate noted at the bottom of page seven. In addition to those on page eight, the first three items through and including the application, the staff recommendation involving the application of Sunoco Pipeline for special permission to add an additional route to its service and to decrease rates on less than statutory notice. Is there a motion to adopt the staff recommendation? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Vice Chairman Play, second by Commissioner Coleman. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes five to zero. It is recommended that the Commission adopt the staff recommendation in the matter involving the quarterly earnings of Pennsylvania Utilities, noting the statement of Vice Chairman Place. Is there a motion to adopt the staff recommendation? <clears throat> so moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Commissioner Sweet, second by Commissioner Coleman. Under discussion, I recognize Vice Chairman Place. Thank you. Madam Secretary, I ask that my statement be entered into the record as if I had read it in its entirety. Before us is the report by the Bureau of Technical Utility Services to the Commission regarding quarterly earnings of Pennsylvania utilities for the quarter ending March 31, 2017. TUS's report maintains a proxy ROE of 9.8% for Pennsylvania gas utilities and a 9.55 ROE for Pennsylvania electric utilities. A consensus 9.75 ROE is being adopted for the investor-owned water utilities. As documented in the report, DCF analysis for natural gas utilities produces an annual average ROE of 9.37% and a range of 8.95% to 9.79% for one standard deviation around the mean. The CAPM analysis produces an ROE of 9.37%, while the average rate base ROE in each jurisdiction, in other jurisdictions, is arguably 9.5%. Similarly, as documented in the report, DCF analysis for electric utilities produces an average ROE of 8.19% and a range of 7.3 to 9.08% for one standard deviation around the mean. The CAPM analysis produces an ROE of 8.57%. Finally, the same analysis indicates an average DCF-derived ROE of 8.82% for water utilities and a range of 7.51 to 10.12% for one deviation around, standard deviation around the mean. The CAPM analysis for water utilities produces a 9.8% ROE figure. 
Given these facts and noting the additional ROE support provided by the Commonwealth's distribution system improvement charges and the ability to use fully projected future test years, I believe that it is prudent and appropriate to continue to migrate to lower proxy ROEs for DISC purposes. I remain concerned with the impacts of these proxy ROE determinations. Such decisions can have a substantial impact on DISC revenue adjustments and future rate case determinations to the extent that these proxy ROEs are viewed as precedent. Cost to rate payers of a 1% in movement of DISC ROEs can range from slightly less than $2 million to upwards of $12 million annually for the current quarter's investments and additive for future incremental investments. Base rate case impacts could be more than $170 million across the Commonwealth for gas and electric utilities alone. Furthermore, I note that under Act 12 of 2016, an investor-owned water and or wastewater utility can acquire a municipal or municipal authority water and or wastewater system at an acquisition price that can exceed the original cost of the acquired system and can insert such an acquisition price into its rate base <laughs> for subsequent rate making purposes. Therefore, it's a, a further evidence that we should be very concerned and cognizant of the impacts of ROE movements, proxy ROEs. It is needlessly costly to reason that ROEs above what the market demands is necessary to ensure investment. This is not a choice between, between attracting investment capital or avoiding ratepayer impacts. To the contrary, being attentive to market signals ensures optimal investment at the lowest cost to ratepayers. For the foregoing reasons, I do not support the continued use of 9.8% and 9.55% as the proxy ROEs for the natural gas and electric utilities, respectively. For the same reasons, I do not support the use of 9.75% proxy ROE figure for the water utilities. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Place any further discussion? Hearing none. Hearing none, excuse me. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. The motion passes four to one, noting the dissent of Vice Chairman Place. Turning now to recommendations provided on behalf of the Commission's Law Bureau, it is recommended that the Commission adopt the three recommendations appearing on page nine in the matters involving the rulemaking pertaining to standards and billing practices for residential utility service, the petition of PennDOT to transfer jurisdiction in the proceeding involving CSX, as well as the recommendation in the matter involving Mah Mahoning Township's petition for declaratory order, and on page 10, it is recommended that the Commission adopt the staff recommendation in the matter involving a rulemaking to reduce the minimum age requirement for paratransit drivers to 18 years of age under limited circumstances. Is there a motion to adopt the staff recommendations? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Commissioner Sweet, second by Vice Chairman Place. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes five to zero. Turning now to matters presented on, the, on behalf of the Commission's Office of Administrative Law Judge, it is recommended that the Commission adopt ALJ Johnson's recommended decision approving a settlement uh, and uh, deeming the OCA's complaint satisfied in the matter involving the UGI Utilities Inc. Gas Division's petition for approval of a distribution system improvement charge. Is there a motion to adopt the staff recommendation? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Commissioner Coleman, second by Commissioner Sweet. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? The motion passes five to zero. Madam Chairman, with regard to the next matter pertaining to the complaint of Leroy James Waters the third versus Pico Energy Company, there is your motion. Is there a motion to call up this matter for consideration? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Vice Chairman Place, second by Commissioner Coleman, and I'll turn it over to Vice Chairman Place to preside. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to recognize Chairman Brown for the purposes of her motion. Chairman Brown. Thank you. Uh, I would ask that my motion be submitted on the record in its entirety, and I would just summarize it for you. In the complaint before us, Mr. Waters, alleges that PICO is failing to complete poll work throughout West Norton Township. 
He states that when PICO replaces electric poles damaged by vehicles or rot, it moves the electric lines to the new poles, but leaves the old poles standing with communication cable attached. He wishes us to direct PICO to fix this problem. By initial decision issued April 25th of this year, the presiding ALJ granted PICO's motion for judgment on the pleadings finding that Mr. Waters lacked standing and dismissed the complaint. Our regulations and well-established case law provide that a motion for judgment on the pleadings should only be granted if the pleadings show there is no genuine issue as to a material fact and that the moving party is entitled to judgment as a matter of law. Based on the statements made in the complaint as well as the lack of specificity in the wording of the complaint, doubt exists regarding whether or not this pro se complainant has the requisite standing to maintain this case. Therefore, this matter should be remanded to the Office of the Administrative Law Judge for fact-finding on Mr. Waters' complaint. Therefore, I move that the initial decision be reversed and remanded to the Office of the Administrative Law Judge consistent with this motion and that the Office of Special Assistance prepare an opinion and order consistent with this motion. Thank you. Having heard the motion, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Sweet. Any discussion? Uh, Vice Chairman, I'm going to be dissenting on this motion as I agree with the initial decision. All right. Thank you. Um, Vice Chairman, I too am going to be dissenting uh, on this motion as I too agree with the uh, opinion offered by the Administrative Law Judge. All right, thank you. Um, any further discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. Opposed. Right. The motion carries three to two, noting the dissent of Commissioners Coleman and Commissioner Paulson. Gavel is yours. On the matter as amended by my motion, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, is there, hearing none, excuse me, on the motion as amended, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. Opposed. The matter as amended passes three to two, noting the dissent of Commissioner Coleman and Commissioner Paulson. Continuing with matters presented on behalf of the Office of Administrative Law Judge on page 12 of the public meeting agenda. With regard to ALJ Barnes' initial decision in the matter involving the complaint of Stacey Stifler versus Metropolitan Edison Company, there is the motion of Vice Chairman Place. Is there a motion to call up this matter for consideration? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Commissioner Sweet, second by Vice Chairman Place, although I'm not sure that you should be seconding it, but I guess you can. <laughs> uh, under discussion, I do recognize you for your um, motion. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, Madam Secretary, I ask that my motion be entered into the record as if I read it in its entirety. Before the Commission for Consideration is the initial decision in the complaint of Stacy Stifler regarding the Metropolitan Edison Company and the above captioned proceeding. The ID dismissed the complaint in part and sustained it in part wherein Ms. Stifler is entitled to a commission payment arrangement on her outstanding balance of $13,772.19. Both parties do not dispute the accuracy of the bills and as a result that portion of the complaint is dismissed. As Ms. Stifler's monthly gross household income is below 150% of the federal poverty income guideline, and due to the existence of a protection from abuse order, the ALJ determined that Ms. Stifler is eligible for a second commission-based payment arrangement. Taking guidance from the payment arrangement provisions in Chapter 14 of the statute, the ALJ granted Ms. Stifler a payment arrangement with a five-year payback period. This five-year payback period results in a $228 monthly repayment schedule in addition to the amount of her current monthly bill, which is on average $324 a month with seasonal fluctuations. The arrearage payback amount, including both month, sorry, including monthly charges, represents 53% of Ms. Stifler's current monthly income of $1,049, which is almost certainly outside the bounds of what is affordable. 
I cannot in good conscience approve a payment arrangement that I know to be untenable, as this serves neither Miss Stifler nor the ratepayers who would be left to cover this arrearage if Miss Stifler were to default. I am in agreement that a second commission-based payment arrangement is warranted in this case as the statute that guides payment arrangements practices does not apply in this particular case due to the complainant's protection from abuse order and due to the evidence, desire, and effort by Ms. Stifler to stay current on her utility bills. Therefore, I believe that a 10-year payback period amounting to a monthly total of approximately $115 plus the average $324 average use would be more appropriate. Clearly, the commission payment arrangement is only part of the solution, as we need to look at Ms. Stifler's utility burden and those of other households in a more holistic manner. Ms. Stifler's current usage in an average of 2,600 kilowatt hours a month or 29,000 kilowatt hours annually is almost three times the electric consumption of the average Pennsylvania home at 10,000 odd kilowatt hours per year. Even with the longer pay payback period for the arrearage, it will be extremely difficult for Ms. Stifler to stay current with her bills with the household's current usage levels. I ask that MedEd conduct a low income usage reduction program audit and provide Ms. Stifler with weatherization and energy efficiency services for which she qualifies in order to assist her in reducing her monthly usage and staying current with her utility bill. Additionally, if they have not already done so, I request that the company contact Ms. Stifler and connect her with its CARES representative and hardship fund program information. I strongly encourage MedEd to consider re-enrolling Ms. Stifler into the customer assistance program, which would include the added benefit of arrearage forgiveness. Though Ms. Stifler does not dispute the total amount owed, considering, sorry, consideration of arrearage forgiveness for even a portion of the arrearage would be appropriate in this circumstance. Ms. Stifler has been proactive in coming before the commission when she was struggling to pay her utility bills. We should assist her with utility issue by also working in tandem with the umbrella of not only utility universal service programs, but any other Commonwealth assistance programs for which she and her family may qualify and benefit. I ask that organizations such as our own Bureau of Consumer Services, in addition to the Office of Consumer Advocate, Public Utility Law Project, Pennsylvania's Department of Economic, sorry, Community and Economic Development, and Human Services assist as appropriate with weatherization, energy education, financial, and or housing assistance to ensure that she and her family receive the benefits and assistance necessary to allow them to pay for the services and costs uh, to make, and sorry, I will restate that sentence. Um, backing up. Sorry, it was a complicated sentence, and I screwed it up in the middle. Um, it, I ask that organizations such as our own Bureau of Consumer Services, in addition to the Office of Consumer Advocate, Public Utility Law Project, Pennsylvania's Department of Community and Economic Development, and Human Services, assist as appropriate with weatherization, energy education, financial and or housing assistance, to assure that she and her family receive the benefits and assistance necessary to allow them to pay for the cost of their utility service and make a financial recovery. Therefore, I move that, one, Ms. Stifler be granted a second commission-based payment arrangement on her outstanding balance of $13,772.19 for a term of 10 years. Stacey Stifler shall make monthly payments consisting of her current bill plus one 120th of the balance accrued on her account, beginning with the first billing due date following the entry of a final commission order in this case, and three, the Office of Special Assistance prepare an opinion and order consistent with this motion. Thank you. You have heard the motion of Vice Chairman Place. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Sweet. Any discussion on the motion? Chairman, I'm going to be dissenting on this motion. I think there are other mitigating factors involved in this case, and therefore I would be supportive of the initial decision. Thank you, Commissioner Coleman. Any further discussion? Uh, Madam Chair, I am also going to be respectfully dissenting. I want to applaud the Vice Chairman for some of his noble efforts to help this consumer. It is alarming to see a consumer using 2,600 kilowatts per month of electricity usage, as alluded to in his motion, at three times the average customer here in Pennsylvania. And having a, a weatherization or an energy audit done uh, by the company or one of our third-party providers would be a, a good first step. But I also go back to the rule of law 
And the rule of law is Chapter 14, and I think in this particular case, we're going outside the boundaries of Chapter 14 here, so I will be respectfully uh, dissenting here this afternoon. Any further discussion? Um, I would note on Commissioner Powelson's note, um, yeah, uh, you make a very good point, and as I did raise it as well, her um, very large usage. Um, it's not in the record, but I suspect her furnace is not working um, and that she's using space heaters and perhaps her stove to, to heat the house, which is arguably why we're looking at such a high value. And again, speaks to the need to, to get in, address the issues, um, look in, at the educational pieces as well, and address it holistically. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chairman. I'd also just add it's called trust but verify. So as long as we can verify it, then I'm more comfortable, um, you know, supporting the motion. So, um, again, I, I respect where you're coming from. I just also have to respectfully dissent on Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Pelst. Any further discussion on the motion? If not, on the motion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. Opposed. <clears throat> The motion passes three to two, noting the dissent of Commissioner Coleman and Commissioner Powelson on the matter as amended. If there's no further discussion, is there? Madam Chair, could I just make one point? I, I would Sweet. draw attention to uh, footnote two of uh, Vice Chairman Andrew Place's uh, motion, which indicates that chapter 14 is not applicable to a case like this where there's a protection from abuse uh, order. Uh, I, I only add to that because uh, um, Commissioner Powelson made a statement which I, I think was not the correct statement of law, although it did mirror the administrative law judge did rely upon Chapter 14. Uh, I do not believe that the ALJ was required by law to do so. And I would say somewhat facetiously that, Commissioner Powelson, you're not allowed to use federal preemption on us quite yet. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> On the matter as amended. She's just sitting there smiling, saying, I'll get my time. <laughs> <laughs> On the matter as amended, all those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed. 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 The motion as amended, or the matter as amended, passes three to two, noting the dissent of Commissioner Coleman and Commissioner Powson. Well, with regard to ALJ Salapa's initial decision sustaining uh, preliminary objections and dismissing the complaint of Jody Butts versus the Columbia Gas of Pennsylvania, Inc., there is a jo joint motion, Madam Chairman, that you have along with Commissioner Coleman. Thank you. Is there a motion to call up this matter for consideration? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Vice Chairman Place, second by Commissioner Powelson. I'll turn it over quickly to Vice Chairman Place to preside. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to recognize Chairman Brown for the purposes of the joint motion. Chairman Brown. Thank you very much. We ask that our motion be submitted on the record in, in its entirety, and let me summarize it for you. Before the commission is an initial decision dismissing the formal complaint filed in September of 2016 based on the doctrine of race judicata and Section 3, 316 of the Public Utility Code based on a prior dismissal of a formal complaint filed in September of 2015. The September 2016 complaint challenges a high bill claim with respect to a $1,800 bill, an alleged payment for $350 that was not credited, and allegations that the complainant must wait one year to get back onto the utilities customer assistance program. The September 2015 complaint, which was dismissed by the commission order for failure to appear to prosecute and meet the burden of proof, challenged a $189 payment and made further allegations of unprofessional conduct by the utility, including claims that the utility had allegedly sequestered too much of the complainant's income for service despite LIHEAP support. The 2015 complaint also claimed that the complainant is being targeted to be made homeless. Upon review of both complaints, the complainant does not appear to raise the same issues in the 2016 complaint that was raised in the 2015 complaint. Judgment on the pleading should be entered only when the case is clear and free from doubt. That is not the situation here. 
with no identity of claims or issues in the complaints, res judicata is inapplicable. Moreover, the dismissal of the 2015 complaint does not have conclusive effect and section 316 of the code cannot be used to bar prosecution of the 2016 complaint. Since the claims made in September 26, 2016 do not appear to be the same as those made in September of 2015, the complaint should be afforded a hearing on these new claims. Therefore, we move that the initial decision to dismiss with prejudice be reversed and this matter be remanded to the Office of the Administrative Law Judge for further proceedings <coughs> and the Office of Special Assistance prepare an opinion and order consistent with this joint motion. Having heard the motion, is there a second? Second. S seconded by Commissioner Sweet. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries five to zero. Gavlis, you. Thank you very much. Um, on the matter as amended by a unanimous motion, is there any further discussion? If not, is it okay to take the previous roll call? No problem. So the motion passed, motion, the matter as amended passes five to zero. With regard to ALJ Meyer's initial decision dismissing the complaint of Gary Peterson versus Pico Energy Company, there are two motions, yours, Madam Chairman, as well as the motion of Commissioner Sweet. Is there a motion to call up the matter for consideration? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Commissioner Coleman, second by Vice Chairman Place. I would turn it over to Vice Chairman Place to preside. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to recognize Chairman Brown for the purposes of her motion. Chairman Brown. Thank you very much. I ask that my motion be spread upon a record in its entirety. This case involves a broken electric wire which caused an electrical surge which damaged various items in Mr. Peterson's house. Mr. Peterson filed a complaint with us seeking approximately $25,000 in damages. It is, well, it is well established that this commission lacks the authority to award monetary damages. Therefore, I agree with the ALJ's dismissal of the complaint. However, because falling electrical lines pose a significant hazard to public safety, and I am hesitant to, to declare that, a, that an otherwise sound primary electric wire fell for no reason without further investigation. As such, I will refer this matter to the Electric Safety Division of our Bureau of Investigation and Enforcement to analyze the cause of the line failure and any other action that it deems necessary. Therefore, I move that the ALJ's initial decision be adopted as modified and that the matter be referred to the Commission's Bureau of Investigation and Enforcement, the Electric Safety Division for, matter, for further analysis and such action as it deems appropriate. Having heard the motion, is there a second? Second. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Sweet. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries five to zero. Gavel is yours. Thank you very much. We have a second motion on this matter. Isn't this exciting? <laughs> it's a very low threshold for excitement. <laughs> <laughs> I will call under Commissioner's call upon Commissioner Sweet for his motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. I doubt that I could rise to that level of um, uh, challenge, but in any event, I ask that my motion be placed upon the record as if I'd read it in its entirety. In the matter before us, the ALJ fashioned the discussion to two questions. Did the falling primary wire constitute unreasonable or inadequate service? Secondly, can the commission award the mon monetary damages sought? Upon finding that the weight of the evidence was not sufficient, to carry the burden of proving that PICO had provided unreasonable or inadequate service, and that the Commission's inability to award monetary damages is well settled, the analysis should stop. Accordingly, I move that the discussion that followed concerning the PICO tariff regarding the limitation of its liability should not be included in the Commission's final opinion and order, as it discusses an issue that need not be reached today. 
Therefore, I move, first, that the initial decision of Administrative Law Judge Benjamin J. Myers is affirmed insofar as it finds that Gary Peterson has not carried his burden of proving that Pico Energy Company provided unreasonable and or unsafe service. Secondly, that the initial decision of the ALJ is amended to remove the discussion regarding the effectiveness of the Pico Energy Company tariff provision 12.1 regarding the limitation of liability for service interruptions and variations. Third, that the Office of Special Assistance prepare an appropriate order. Thank you. You have heard the motion of Commissioner Sweet. Is there a second? Second. Second. Second by um, Commissioner Paulson. On the motion, any further discussion or any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. On the motion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes 5 to 0. On the matter as amended by two unanimous motions. Is there any further discussion? If not, can we take the previous roll call? Commissioner Powelson, can yes. we take the previous roll call? Absolutely. Okay, I hear no objection. The matter as amended passes five to zero. Continuing on page 13 of the public meeting agenda with regard to ALJ Meyer's initial decision granting the motion for judgment on the pleadings and dismissing the complaint of Sherry Horinka versus the Pennsylvania Power Company, there is the motion of Commissioner Sweet. Is there a motion to call up the matter for consideration? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Vice Chairman Place, second by Commissioner Coleman. Under discussion, I recognize Commissioner Sweet for his motion. Thank you, and I ask that my motion be placed upon the record as if I'd read it in its entirety. The matter before us is the initial decision of Administrative Law Judge Benjamin L. Myers, granting a motion for judgment on the pleadings filed by Penn Power Company and dismissing the formal complaint of Sherry Harinka. Ms. Harinka's formal complaint seeks a more affordable pay arrangement than she had received from the Commission's Bureau of Consumer Services pursuant to an informal complaint. Whether or not an appeal from the BCS determination is timely will determine the standard of review that a request for a payment arrangement receives as a formal complaint. Here, the incredibly complex process, coupled with holidays and weekends, I would note if this all occurred around Christmas time, made it difficult, makes it difficult to determine whether the appeal was timely. Even the postmark on the envelope carrying the formal complaint form is unreadable. If upon further scrutiny, the date that the complaint was deposited in the US mail is unclear, then the complainant should be given the benefit of the doubt and the filing should be treated as timely. If that is the determination, then this customer deserves the opportunity to provide evidence in her formal complaint. Therefore, this matter should be refer returned, excuse me, to the Office of Administrative Law Judge for proceedings consistent with this motion. Therefore, I move that first the initial decision of Administrative Law Judge Benjamin J. Myers granting a motion for summary judgment on the pleadings filed by Pennsylvania Power and dismissing the formal complaint of Sherry Hareka is reversed. Secondly, the, power, the motion uh, for judgment on the pleadings filed by Pennsylvania Power Company is denied. Third, that this matter is returned to the Office of Administrative Law Judge for appropriate proceedings consistent with this motion. And finally, the Office of Special Assistance prepared appropriate order. Thank you. You have heard the motion of Commissioner Sweet. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Vice Chairman Place. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, on the motion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes five to zero on the matter as amended. Is there any objection to taking the previous roll call? Nope. Hearing no. none, hearing none. All those in favor, I'm sorry. The motion passes five to zero. 
Madam Chairman and Commissioners, that does conclude the presentation of regular agenda items. Turning now to the carry-in agenda, page one of the carry-in agenda and the first item, it is recommended <coughs> that the Commission adopt the staff recommendation to grant, subject to further review of the merits, the petition for reconsideration of the Commission's action in granting a petition for leave to withdraw uh, PPL Electric Utilities Corporation's petition for leave to withdraw a, an amendment to the implementation date of the Customer Assistance Standard Offer Program. Is there a motion to adopt the staff recommendation? So, so Second. Motion by Commissioner Coleman, second by Commissioner Sweet. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes five to zero. With regard to the next matter involving a petition for reconsideration of staff action, uh, with regard to the city of Erie's uh, uh, request to abolish a crossing in uh, the city of Erie, Erie County. There was the motion of Commissioner Sweet. Is there a motion to call up this matter for consideration? So moved. Sarah, second. Second. Motion by Vice Chairman Place, second by Commissioner Paulson. Under discussion, I recognize Commissioner Sweet for his motion. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And my motion is so brief, I will read it in its entirety. <laughs> this matter is an appeal from staff action memorialized in the form of a secretarial letter issued after the parties to this docket agreed upon the removal of the subject bridge at the city of Erie's sole cost and expense with the railroad bearing the cost of safeguarding its rail services during construction. Adam J. Trott filed the petition for reconsideration of staff action. The record does not show that Mr. Trott is a party of record in this matter. The application was served on Mr. Trott as someone who may be interested in this case, but Mr. Trott did not file a protest or any other document which would indicate that he wished to become a party. As he is not a party to this case, Mr. Trott cannot file a petition for reconsideration and it would be improper to grant it. He had actual notice of the application and failed to file a protest or intervene. The time for taking these actions has long since passed. Therefore, I move that the petition for reconsideration be denied and that the Office of Special Assistance prepare an appropriate order. Thank you. You've heard the motion of Commissioner Sweet. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Coleman. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes five to zero. The matter as amended, if there's no objection, we'll take the previous roll call. Seeing none, the matter as amended passes five to zero. Turning now to page two of the carrying agenda, it is recommended that the commission adopt on behalf of the Bureau of Technical Utility Services, the staff recommendation regarding the application of Aqua Pennsylvania Wastewater Inc. for the acquisition of water, wastewater assets of the Avon School District, Avon Grove School District in Chester County. Is there a motion to adopt the staff recommendation? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Vice Chairman Place, second by Commissioner Paulson. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes five to zero. And it is recommended that the commission adopt the staff recommendation with regard to a ratification of a staff secretarial letter in the matter involving the West Goshen Township. Is there a motion to adopt staff recommendation? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Commissioner Sweet, second by Vice Chairman Place. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes five to zero. Madam Chairman and Commissioners, that does conclude the presentation of, of public meeting agenda items. Thank you very much. Before we adjourn, I would like to, while we are still on the record, congratulate Commissioner John Coleman on his recent confirmation, unanimous confirmation by the Senate of Pennsylvania to be coming back here as a, a commissioner here with the Public Utility Commission. Uh, I, I can say that he has been such a great asset to the commission and as to me as the chair, uh, very professional in his conduct of a commissioner and has gained so much um, 
knowledge on the different areas that come before us as a commission. We know his expertise in the natural gas areas and the issues that we address here, but he has so much information and knowledge that he has shared with us on so many other issues. And, and I congratulate him and, and thank the governor for nominating him and the Senate for con uh, confirming him. Just want to give my congratulations on the record to him. Well, thank you very much for those kind words, Chairman Brown. Um, it's great to control your destiny once again, at least four or five more years here at the commission. Um, you know, I always felt that if I get to a point where I get up in the morning and look in the mirror and decide I'm not having fun, it's time to go and do something else. And I um, still get up each morning and, and have a passion for what we do here collectively at this organization and realize that we make a difference each and every day. So I'm delighted to be here for another five years. Um, I do want to thank the governor for the nomination. As all of you know, that's where this process starts with the governor's nomination and then through a Senate confirmation. So I'm, I'm grateful for the governor to uh, nominate me uh, to serve for another five years at the commission. Uh, it also helps to have uh, some support in the Senate. So I want to thank uh, my good friend, Senator uh, Jay Corman, the majority leader I live in, uh, in Senator Corman's district, and also the Senate pro tem, uh, Joe Scarnati. Uh, Joe is a longtime personal friend as well, so I'm uh, grateful for their continued support over the years here at the Commission. Uh, this has been a great run. We've done a, a lot of wonderful things here in this organization, and I'm looking forward to another five. I um, want to thank all of you for your kind uh, congratulatory notes and comments and words of encouragement. This was one of those um, confirmation process that was uh, very stealth-like. We, uh, I think we set a record here in getting through from a nomination to a, a Senate confirmation and vote in 11 days. And uh, my understanding is they have 10 days that they need to wait before they can do that. So on the 11th day, uh, we were voted and I'm, uh, I'm grateful for a unanimous vote from the Senate. So good to be here for another five years. And again, thank you for the support. If there's nothing else, I declare that the meeting is adjourned.